All right. So I've got Sam Woods here with me today, and he has his own e-letter called, it's something about robots or what's it called? Bionicwriter.com. <laughs> I was close and I signed You're up right and close. I love it. Um, so <laughs> Sam has really been on the forefront of AI and copywriting and, uh, you know, it's kind of, he's done a personal deep dive into it. And I know you've actually been using it with some success. So yeah. um, he's also somebody that I've mentored in the past and we, you know, have a friendship that goes back uh, at least four or five years. So um, I just, you know, appreciate you having, taking time with me and I don't even know if we're ever going to even show this video to anybody, but <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. Just, uh, I think it's just, you know, I always regret sometimes when I have conversations with really smart people and then we yeah. don't, we're like, oh shoot, we should have recorded it. You know, story so, of my life. Yeah, it is the story of everybody's lives, but yeah. now it's so easy to do with zoom. <laughs> It is. It is. Yeah. If we could just get well, the audio to work, but we finally got it. Exactly. Right. Well, it sounds like it. I can hear you. You can hear me. So hopefully that means it's a breakthrough. Audio. It's a breakthrough. Yes. It truly is. Yeah. So we're yeah. going to change the world because we now can do audio. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane to me, though, that it's 2022 and you still run into issues with tech. Like, why isn't everything just smooth as butter? But whatever. It is what it is. I, I, I can't tell you how many countless times like trying to deal with a customer service issue with a company yeah. or whatever it is. And it's like, wouldn't it just be easier if we didn't have any computers? Like, you yeah. know, yeah, back yeah. in the day, sometimes it was just so simple. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so now we're talking about what the heck is AI? Is it mm -hmm. like, I mean, I part of me is, you know, I mean, I've seen what people are like all going goo goo eyed over they are. and, I, and the, yeah. the, the part of me is kind of like yeah right I mean maybe for some things but you know especially for someone like myself and you who mm. have written in like these ultra competitive niches you yeah. know you can't just have a somewhat generic predictable copy um right. and then I know that it can definitely be leveraged though you know in many mm -hmm. ways like one of my mentees uh you know Jody Robertson from 2021 mm. She was just sharing with me how she's used it, like it's been amazing for copywriting research and when yep. she's working on supplements, right? Yeah. Um, but then, you know, part of me is sort of like, is is AI like the new crypto? <laughs> you know, right. like is it like crypto was going to totally change everything? You know, four or five yeah. years ago. And, well, <clears throat> yeah. The, as with anything, and I don't know if I interrupted you. If you had anything else? No, to that's that, that's but... a good lead in. I've yeah. Yeah. As with anything and everything, there's always a hype period, and we're in a hype period now. Part of that is because crypto crashed, and so that same attention and energy has to go somewhere, and AI is another tech like crypto is. Mm. So it's easy for that. It's easy for people to slide over. There was crypto, Web3, big thing, um, crypto crash, like I said, and then now it's like, oh, there's this other thing. So part of what's happening is that there's a shiny object syndrome happening, there's hype happening. Um, I think a key difference is that uh, crypto and Web3 wasn't, the use cases weren't really readily available to the masses, if that makes sense. Right. Like even just buying crypto was, a you know, people made it easy, that like Coinbase made it super easy, but still you got to manage wallets and all this stuff. And so um, with AI now, as we're, as it's happening now, is that there's a vertical integration happening where tools like ChatGPT just came out a couple weeks ago, but right. GPT-3 has been around for two years. And before three, there was two, right? So those tools have existed, but they've existed um, on their own, in their own environment. But now what's happening is that you're seeing vertical integration of AI capabilities together with tools. So Canva, for example, uh, have started to offer tools that use image generation tools. So there's text tools and there's image generation tools and also video and audio tools where uh, to make it super simple, you give AI material and then it spits material back at you. You know, you right. give it prompts, you give it input, and then it just creates something out of what you gave it. It's also trained on like huge data sets. So like GPT-3 was basically consumed the internet for a few years, read all the books in Google, and then that's why it's able to give us legible and usable output back. So it's part hype, like a lot of it is hype. And I think a lot of people are, it's a self-reinforcing feedback loop because the more people talk about it, the more people go, oh, I can't miss out. And so they join in, right. they talk about it and then it just spirals 
around and around and around. And I think, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see some people lose interest and other people will just not, not quite take the next step and use it in what they do. But I've been using AI in different ways since 2019. And then um, it's the AI capabilities on the quantitative data analytical side is mm -hmm. very well developed and has been around for a long time. The change now is that at least what people say AI, so AI, I'm not gonna get into the definition because people argue about this all the time, but for the sake of simplicity, AI now, which is um, a combination of machine learning and other um, tech, AI now is able to give you text back, images back based on prompts you give it. And that wasn't really the case a few years ago. GPT-3 made that possible where if you logged into OpenAI's uh, website, you create an account, you could give GPT-3 prompts of different kinds, anything right. from questions to statements, and it would give you stuff back. So that's been around for a couple of years. Yeah, like but, the Jasper. Yeah. Yeah. Jasper is built on top of it. Most, mm -hmm. most, almost all text tools that you see are built on top of GPT-3. Yeah, so that's and, right now anyway. Right now anyway. Right. And some of them use other models. So GPT-3 is one language model out of probably like 20 or so bigger ones. Mm-hmm. It is just, it's been used the most because it's the best, as in it gives people the most useful output. But there are other language models, other data sets in use by other companies. And so like copy.ai, for example, they use GPT-3 with other, in combination with other models. So I've used GPT-3 because I'd like to go direct to the source, but Jasper is a great tool. CopyLime is a great tool. Copy.ai, they're all tools. And that's the key now is it's fun to play with tools, but unless you incorporate it into a process and your workflow, then they'll just remain cool things, right? So that's mm -hmm. a key difference now. Right, right. And so, yeah, I'm curious, like, it sounds like you've had personal experience with using it, like with testing different ads, like Facebook ads, yeah. you've used it for like conversion optimization. Across um, the board, yeah. I mean, do you want to I mean, what are some some key takeaways or lessons you've learned mm -hmm. from that? Because I feel like that is a much more applicable way to use this um, rather yeah. than, oh, it's just going to replace, you know, the email I send to my list necessarily right. or, you know, that right. kind of stuff. Maybe, maybe someday it will replace uh, writers or copywriters, but I doubt it. I think the way things are going, uh, you still need it, the human touch and human human perception, discernment, judgment, and taste and point of view to edit right. what it gives you. The storytelling, the personality. Storytelling. Mm -hmm. yeah. Changing yeah. language, choosing different words. Right. And I think you will always need that. Uh, but so I've used different AI tools for since 2019 for um, ads, emails, conversion rate optimization, data analytics. And I've tested... Um, copy written by a robot versus humans. And uh, sometimes or very often the quote unquote robot copy wins and other times the human copy wins. And it's a, it's a false uh, dilemma that you have to choose either one. It's either all human or all robot. It's, well, is it all robot though? Like, I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but yeah, like, you say the yeah. all robot, wasn't there some human intervention? Like no. It really seriously, it gets strictly okay. Yep. So this is mostly it, shorter copy because like short form copy. Yeah, yeah. It, it wrote short form copy for us, and we just copy and pasted it into Facebook, Google, uh, different huh. platforms that we used. And you found some of those won. Many of them won. Many, huh. many of them won. Um, and same for like landing. So like, gosh, there's so many places I can go. So I'm gonna try to like bring it into something that 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 makes sense. So it it has for the past few years. It has done short form copy really, really well, like exceptionally well. And it's it's the capability to write longer copy is expanding. And right. so two years ago, you could get maybe three to 500 words of usable text and then it just went off the rails. Now you can get probably about 1500 words, if not more. And it's it makes it all makes sense. It mm -hmm. sounds like a human wrote it that you don't detect any difference between robot versus human who, in terms of who wrote it. So it's getting better in that in that respect. But I've used it, like I said, in and it's been anything from writing ads to uh, doing first drafts, and then a human takes it and turns it into something usable. Right. And 
always the hardest thing to nail is is like tone and voice and personality but that's just the nature of 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 how these are trained so there are settings you can change so you get more personality like text mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they've been trained to be very neutral sure but these are like if you're buying like the jasper let's say they come up with their new and improved one or somebody mm -hmm. like they want to be able to sell to as many businesses as possible yeah um I mean, I'm, you know, my brain's kind of exploding with thoughts, but like, you know, what if you wanted to MLA a certain copywriter's voice, you know, like Kim Krause Schwamm or Stefan Georgie, or what if yeah. we created our own tools or I don't know, like, and then of You'll course be able you, to. you have people who, what is um, Justin Blackman and Abby, mm. um, why, why am I blanking on her last name? Wilcock, but they have, Abby Wilcock? Or yeah, they have the whole, um, whatever it is they have. Codex Academy, right? I think that's what yep. they call it. It's all about a system for how do you get capture the voice of like mm -hmm. Ramit Seti or some other person mm -hmm. when you write their emails. So it seems like we have that technology where you could say, like, if you're writing copy for this person or that person, like yeah. you could, I mean, we used to do that way, way back in the day when I, you know, helped launch and run the Healthy Direction supplement business. And we were selling Dr. Whitaker supplements or Dr. David Williams mm -hmm. supplements. And like everything had to be like their little, what was their language? What were their words? Did they say folks? Mm -hmm. Did they say this or that? You know, so I'm just- You can, of, yeah. you can get to that I mean, point. It seems oh, like all that would be totally doable now. It is, it is. So, and like, not like readily click a button and it's done. Right. But if, let, let's say I took all the promos you've ever written and I transcribed like any podcast episodes, any videos. If I took all your courses, if I took all of your content. But you've done all that already, right? No, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Surely yeah. you have. I'm actually talking to AI right now. You're not even the real Kim. So <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm just, just me. Yep. <laughs> but if I took all of that and trained and used it as a data set and then trained um, a model with it, I can get to the point now where I could have a Kimbot and it, you quote unquote can form the basis for that bot. And I can get something out of that bot. That would be something you would say. Okay. Or That's something that you could kind of scary. All the it, is scary. <laughs> it is scary. It is scary. It's, it's, it's exciting and terrifying at the same time. And so it makes me want um, to be really unpredictable now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, really. See, yeah, this is this is a key thing. It, it means <laughs> that you have an opportunity to be more fully human in, in who you are and what you do. And AI enables that. So you can do that now. It just takes a little bit of coding uh, understanding and you have to collect it all and you know clean the data, et cetera. But long story short is through some manual work and coding, et cetera, I can create a Kimbot that if I then give it a prompt, then it'll give me stuff back that would be something you would say. Okay, so I'm actually really, that sounds really good. I mean, I I mean, it could be that the Kimbot actually does better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> it would write faster, right? Like I mean, it could probably it write could faster. faster. It could be more consistent. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You never like, sleep, you don't out. eat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you want to hire me, it's going to be cheaper. If you want to hire the Kimbot, it's going to cost you more. <laughs> cost you more, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can do that. Like, so, right. and some of this just depends on what's available. The more data, the larger the data set that it can train on, the better, right? So if if you're someone who's barely written a word and only a little bit, it's just not going to be enough data for these algorithms to train on, right? So it just depends. But the point is that it's, it's possible now. And I think probably within a year, it'll uh It'll be capable, depending on which model you use and so on, it'll be capable of writing a long form sales letter from start to finish. You can do it now and you do it in chunks, in sections, right? But I think right. we'll get to the point where you can do it completely. Now, whether that is good copy or bad copy just depends. But where like the way this is going is that within a couple of years, probably at most, it'll be able to produce long form sales copy, even direct response long form sales copy that is something that maybe a junior writer would produce or a copy cub would produce. And so your job then would be to copy chief it and to be the person who edits, changes, move things around, rewrites and takes all the draft and all the chunks of text and so on and turn it into something that it needs to be. So I have many, many questions about that. Um, sure. So, the little bit that I've played around with like the GPT-3, 
Um, and I guess the chat one is you're fairly limited in how much input you can provide. To a um, degree. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, when you think about, okay, so when I just think about like the typical supplement sales page that I might write, you know, there could be anywhere from, you know, three to six ingredients and not every mm. ingredient is going to get, you know, a full section on it. Um, yeah. But there's like, there's the headline, there's the lead, there's, you know, introducing who's talking, there's, mm. you know, you know, kind of the problem set up and, you know, why nothing else has worked. And, you know, we kind of, there's some similar elements, although again, I always like, I approach almost everyone as sort of this organic thing. I mean, there's certain elements that are, you know, similar, so I've never felt like you can just do it strictly by the numbers or formulaically, mm. but, um, and then you get into, you know, like really, I mean, you've been with me, you know how yeah. I teach teach this, yeah. right? So then you're like, which of these ingredients is really unique and has the best story? And I dug up all these yep. studies and God, this one's from Harvard and it has humans. And so mm. that one I want to use, right? Or, you know, all these little micro decisions that you make mm -hmm. and then, you know, how you structure it and then bringing testimonials and other proof. So I don't know, like you can't freaking put all that in a little paragraph or even a do you know what i mean to feed it in yeah so you do how it in does chunks that even work so you do it so to, you can get a usable first shitted draft of a sale, long form direct response sales page now if you do it in chunks and in sections okay so for this section we're just going to talk about xyz and you feed that in and then you see yeah it comes up with. and and well, so, and this is where, this is where, especially copywriters, really anyone who writes anything, any marketer, but copywriters especially can excel, which is that the prompt you give it determines the output you get. Right. And so the better prompt, the better the output. So if you give it the right prompt, formulated in the right way and formulated in different ways, then you will get output that you can use. So it's not just let's talk about vitamin D in blah, 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 is more so that let's say the, the, the sales letter is for, let's just pretend men over 50 with, let's say a prostate problem, right? And so there's certain ingredients that in the supplement you want there to be. So for any given ingredient, you take the ingredient itself, but then the kind of prompts you put in would be variations of it. Like why would X ingredient be good for men with prostate health problem. Like, why mm -hmm. would it be? How is it good? How does it work? And then give me, then you say to, or say you prompt the GPT and say, give me a movie scene in which an, uh, a man over 50 is arguing with his wife about his bedroom problems. <laughs> and it'll write you the dialogue and the right. scene. Yeah, and I the see way how you, that could and, be could come in that, handy for sure. Yeah, it can come in um, handy because it'll give you emotions. It'll give you thoughts. It'll give you scenarios that you can go, okay, if, if, if my prospect is reading this and they have these arguments, like why don't I use that in a section right. on my sales page, right? Maybe in yeah, the no, I can see, I can see that. And then, yeah, like you get into specific ingredients and then like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I can't remember the specific example um, my mentee shared. You know, she had a couple of different things she had used it for um, coming up with research and copy yes. uh, that she could use. You know, I know that in the past, like years ago, I wrote a joint promo and there was some cascade reaction of inflammation mm. that this, you know, particular ingredient addressed, but it was like, how the freak do I explain this, yeah. you know, in a way and I, you know, I, I love finding these like middle school science websites, <laughs> you yeah. know, because then they have it like, <laughs> oh, okay. You know what I mean? And mm. then you kind of get an idea. So it sounds like I could probably just stick that cascade, whatever yeah. it was term, you know, inflammation, explain yeah. this and it could spit that out. But I don't know if yeah. it would do it as good as the eighth grade science. I don't know. Um, it might not. It but might not. here's the thing. You can prompt it a hundred times. And it'll give you variations of that, what it is you're asking for. So you can get rewrites, paraphrasing where you, and again, for copywriters, you need to develop the, the sense of judgment where you can tell what's good copy or not. Obviously, at the end of the day, data rules and whatever works, works. But you right. know this as with the experience you have, you read something, you can just, you can tell, you can pick out what's good. You can pick out what's not working even before you run it live. So you have a sense of what it should look like and what is good copy. And that skill set is what you need to practice. 
And so AI, for lack of a better word, can help you develop and sharpen that by giving you variations. Let's say you have 50 ads in front of you. If you're a good copywriter with decent experience and you know what a good ad looks like, then you can look at those 50 ads and you go, ad number 19, number five, and number 30, 37 are the ones we're going to test because they're just better than the other, all the other 47 ads that I'm looking at. I hear you. And there was one thing that you were saying about you can put it in up to a hundred times and see what it keeps spitting out. More, a thousand times. Right. Yeah. Like if I wanted to, like, no, I need a clearer explanation of cascade yeah. information or whatever it is. Um, but I'm wondering, like uh, my friend Chris Orzachowski sent this email to his list. And of course he's writing co- email, right? Yeah. And I know personally, like if I have a very clear idea in my head, what I want to write to my list, like it, I can just write it like that. Like, yeah. you know, so like, I guess his point was like, okay, you can use these tools, but they take like so much more time. Honestly, like you could just literally just write it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I could go to the one website, find the eighth grade explanation, put that in my own words. Yeah. It's done. Like, do I really want to go through a hundred iterations? Um, so uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, you know, so how, how do you think like the GPT-4 is going to change things? Like, does it, how does it come overcome some of these limitations that I, I, It'll be, um, how can I put this? So I know I know people who work on it and um, I'm trying to find a way to say this without like <laughs> breaching conf- confidentiality agreements. So, oh, um, okay. <laughs> you really do have the inside track on this then. Yeah, I just because just of the work I've done and I'm fortunate to be introduced to people and form relationships with people who are doing, who are working on this stuff. So mm-hmm. long story short is the way it's been trained both in terms of parameters and the way they've now iterated, uh, it'll be unlike anything that we, it, it'll be both unlike anything we can imagine and better than we can imagine. So my suspicion is that chat GPT, which came out just a few weeks ago, is a version of GPT-4 and they're just not telling us. Okay. Um, but they released it for free so that they can do more training and more research. Right, yeah, because so, everybody's and, using it. I mean, everybody yeah, exactly. and their freaking brother is sending yep. an email. And then at the end, they're like, oh, by the way, this was written by. And I'm just like, you know, yeah. I don't I don't like I feel like I feel tricked, you know, um, I feel. But so everyone is using um, it. And that's the point. That's, <laughs> like, that's kind of the point is to get the data. Right. Exactly. We're it. just teaching it. We're allowing it to take over the world more because we're using it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we are. But I I think the capabilities will be um, like I said, it'll be both amazing and disappointing at the same time because we like what's happening now is that people are anthropomorphizing chat gpt and gpt3 and they talk about it as if it's an entity that you interact with but the reality is all it's doing which is it's an, it's amazing that they made it work this way but what it does it just predicts the next word in any mm-hmm. given text yeah it's like when so you it's write on your smart. stupid phone and it fills in yeah. all these words that you know that's not what i wanted to say in my text it's it's not in, it's not intelligent. Right. It's right. not like you know. It's not its own thing. But what's happening is that people are starting to see it as a separate entity that they can interact with, and that it has some semblance of of intellect. But for whenever it comes uh, next year, probably at some point. My guess is early next year, but whenever that is. Yeah, I think I was hearing February, but I don't know if I just made it yeah. in my head. Now that's that's kind of what people are talking about. I I don't know. I don't know the exact date. They, no one will tell you. Like the only people who know are the people inside a small circle inside OpenAI. Know the robots like, know. Like, the robots. Yeah, the robots know. They know when this <laughs> They're not telling us. They're not telling. <laughs> exactly. But it'll be it'll be um, it'll be more up to date, obviously, on what's happened because even ChatGPT was trained up to like 2021, so it doesn't know what happened yesterday, as an example. But it'll have more up to date. Uh, understanding, but it'll be able to give us output that's more natural and longer without breaking. So now, like I said, you can get maybe a thousand words out and it doesn't break as in it doesn't fall into some like insanity and it'll have more, I think nuance will be more possible than it is now. And at the same time, they're going to limit it more because, because it is so capable of really a ton the limitations, I think, are going to be more pronounced. So there are things you can't get G- chat GPT or GPT-3 to say. And there are things you can't get Those out of the Those are the things it'll... I'm curious about. <laughs> yeah. Well, so 
So I won't tell you when it's coming out. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tell you, okay. And what's your plan for world domination? It'll tell you that though. But, okay. but the, so that's one model. I think what will happen because it's the biggest one, they're also going to limit it very a lot, more so probably than, than they may otherwise do. But like I said before, there are many other models that don't have the same limitations. And I think those will grow in usage and also um, like training and how people interact with them and use them. So I think like getting um, getting an article written that's 2,500 words and it's mm -hmm. beginning, middle, end, logical, and also include nuance, I think that'll be absolutely possible. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, so I mean, it, you really, I mean, what, what a lot of people are saying and you've kind of, you know, said too, is, you know, your role potentially as a copywriter yeah. is going to change. I mean, you still have yeah. to really understand copy and the structure of good copy, et cetera, and what constitutes mm -hmm. good copy, but you are more of the copy chief or you're more like the producer director mm -hmm. yeah. role. And, you know, and you're the one that's saying, yeah, you know what, you know, like you said, you could yeah. whip up a hundred different test versions and let's take the top three of these by our own personal judgment that we think. Yeah. So there's a judgment, there's experience, there's, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's still that role that's needed. There's potentially yeah. much greater efficiency. Um, yeah. I mean, so I don't know, none of that. I mean, who should be scared? Who should be worried? Uh, mediocre copywriters. Copywriters who don't spend the time to learn and study the craft and improve their craft. Like yeah. this will, so like you can get a mediocre article written for you and done for like what a hundred bucks or whatever, like whatever the cheap version is. Right. And there are, there are, so there are writers who provide that as a service. They're, they're going to be gone in less than a year. Like yeah. no one's going to want the mediocre human cop uh, writing because they can get mediocre robot writing and not waste time on edits. Copywriters, I think, unless like for short form, um, why, like why would, let's say Agora, hire 10 short form copywriters when they can have one copy chief who manage, manages a robot that produces far better short form, much faster. Because at a certain point, it's all about the numbers game and the volume, right? So if you're a larger company in the direct response world, then why would you work with five, six, 10 junior copywriters who produce mediocre short form copy when you can get as good or better short form from a robot that doesn't eat or sleep or complain or want their invoice paid, right? So like, the, I think mm -hmm. mediocre copywriters are gonna, like either you catch up and you study the art and you become a master in a, of your craft or go do something else. Yeah, I think that that's good advice. I mean, it was good advice even before this, obviously. Right, so it's more things haven't changed ever. and have changed at the same time. Like, so it's, it just... um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's not, it's not saying it's copywriting is dead. It's, no. um, it's a different way of looking at it. And, yeah. you know, it could be that, you know, there are going to be junior copywriters, but they're they're going to be kind of the mini directors because I can't yeah. imagine if somebody's got five products under them and they're the copy chief for all that. Like, you know, there's going to be, a, it's almost like the same, like there's this hierarchy of, you know, it'll be managed to a certain point and then they'll look yeah. at it, right? And yeah. and then in my, because it's so much easier to test things than it mm -hmm. is now, like, you know, call up your copywriter, like, oh, we need a new lead. Well, you know, I got six people in front of you. Oh, you know, yeah. I'll get to that in July, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now it's like, well, every week, every month, you know, we can test mm -hmm. five different things, you know, yep. because the, it's so much easier now. So even I would think the increased amount of testing the ease mm -hmm. of it will actually create more work, you know, it will. More, but again, it's a little different role as a copywriter. It yeah. will. It'll create more work, more opportunities. And like, if you're, if you're content being a mediocre copywriter who can churn out decent leads, decent short form that somewhat converts and so on, but you've been kind of skating by for a few years because there's been a demand for copywriters. And so because of that, it's easy for mediocre copywriters to still be hired because they mm -hmm. just need it. But I think with, no matter where you are and the experience and skill set of being a copywriter, whether you're starting out or you're experienced copy chief for 20, 30 years, the opportunities are the same. And it's just a matter of, are you willing to dive into it or not? Like it's, I, I have, I know copy chiefs with large direct response companies who have, who are now starting to train or having their staff copywriters start using these tools mm -hmm. so that they get, one, they get familiar with it. Two, they get good at it so that 
if they come to their junior copywriter and say, hey, we need like 10 ideas or in rough drafts for new leads by like Tuesday and it's Friday, that copywriter will only need to spend five, six hours using a tool to generate those ideas. Maybe right. they generate 50 ideas, call it down to 10, right. flesh it out, go back to GPT, get some more raw copy done so that when they get to the meeting with a copy chief, they can present one idea per page, have a page written of a draft of a lead. That's more useful for a copy chief to have not just a headline, but like half of a page of a lead. Right, it's like a treatment almost. You can kind of see. Like, yeah, okay, that's exactly. That's how that would be. You get a sense for, exactly. Right. And right. imagine being able to do that in like five, six hours as opposed to five, six days. Right, right. So everything's going to be faster. Faster. Everything faster. So Faster, but yeah. here's the caveat. Here's the caveat. Faster, but that doesn't mean you can expect to have copy done faster overall because there's still going to need to be a period of editing, revising, thinking, testing. Mm -hmm. Like the, it, it doesn't remove everything. Mm -hmm. It actually, it, the, what's going to happen, this is what I said earlier, what's going to happen is that there's going to be a more a demand for copywriters who know how to make a judgment call when they get 100 different ads done. Even with a large budget, it's not useful to run 100 different ads because some of those will be ads you've run before. Some of them will be angles you know don't work. So why run them again, right? So you, you're still going to need to have a judgment <laughs> call made when right. you look at So copy. the judgment call though. Okay. Cause I'm just trying to jot down. Okay. Like what would be mm -hmm. some takeaways for copywriters today? Like what are the things you need to do now? Like one thing you said was understand, study your craft, yeah. you know, the craft of copywriting. Yeah. You have to constantly keep doing that. Yes. So that's part of where maybe you can start to make judgment calls, but a lot of mm -hmm. that too is just going to come from actual good old experience. experience. Um, yep. The second is obviously start using the AI tools and get good at using them, you know, yep. Because it's not just put it in once, you put it in maybe yep. another iteration that's been fleshed yep. out and et cetera, et cetera. Um, where do you think copywriting research, like, you know, mm. there's different types of research, obviously. And again, we were talking about how could this be a lot easier, potentially, like, what's the best study for, you know, this particular ingredient, maybe. Um, yep. But when it comes to studying who you're writing to. I mean, you said mm. you could just plug in something about a man having an issue in the bedroom with his wife and you can get mm -hmm. a script. But, you know, what about things like, you know, the prism exercise that I teach in Research Beast, for example, where you're going deep into, you know, their greatest fears, hopes, desires, yeah. you know, you know, what keeps you, them up at night, that kind of thing. You can ask ChatGPT and also GPT-3 those questions and it'll give you an accurate answer. So it it does that. It's able yep. to do that. Because you have to think of it this way. Where are those concerns, fears, worries expressed? They're expressed somewhere on the internet. Reviews, people talking about it on video, wherever. If you have a, an, again, for lack of a better distinction, if you have, quote, unquote, an AI, consume all of that, all of recorded human history, books, texts, audio, video, all of it. It's going to pick up what people are complaining about and what they think. So you can get their actual words, their language, because that's, again, that's something yeah. I find so helpful when I'm doing research. Is so how do they yeah, describe a sinus you. issue? I, mm -hmm. You know, I've never had sinus issues, thankfully. Yeah. So I need to hear, like, it feels like I got hit by a truck, you know, or whatever it is. Like, is it going to yeah. tell me those things? It'll give you, it'll give you those variations and variants of people's expression Mm -hmm. If you give it prompts that elicit it. Right. So again, this and is so, part of getting good at using the AI and how to exactly. write the, how to create the right prompts, you know. Yeah. Because I might in, want yeah. I might want the same, I might have 10 different ways of prompting chat GPT to give me fears only. I might ask it to give me fears for a prostate issue as an example. And I might need to ask it about those fears in 10 different ways. And right. each time I get something new and different, and that is a reflection of what people say. So you still need and, to know what to ask. So you still need, yeah. for example, the research beast framework. Or this, you is, still this, need, is, like, this is why I said. Well, you, I'm just craft. saying you still need to know yeah. what to ask. So like, if you can't just yeah. say, tell me what but I need to know about now. this avatar, they're going to be like, yeah. they just give but this is bunch. also true now. When you do research now, you need to know what to look for. Exactly. You need to know you what to, know to ask questions. yourself. Exactly. exactly. You have to know or the you questions. You just go into the whole Google like two yeah. weeks later. I have nothing. Yeah. You, you, don't, <laughs> like, you don't Google prostate issues and hit search on Google. Like you don't right. do that. You yeah. know what to look yeah. for. Or you, uh, if you study the craft you and go through. 
you got you got to be specific. And so, so like even now, I can just real quick on research. If yeah. I just string together two two or three different tools, I can take any review from let's say Amazon or any other website that has reviews. I can take that put it together into like useful formatting so that it's clear and run sentiment and emotional analysis of those reviews. And I can get categories for the emotions expressed. That sounds super so, cool. Such as here's a column for all the fears and then blah, 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 language of, of around fears around a certain issue. Here's a column for like happiness or whatever joy. And then it gives me did, 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 all the language according to ca emotional categories. I feel like that could just be, we could just have our own little geek out session on that. I would love that. Maybe exactly. we'll do that as a, a follow-up. Well, like, this is seriously, now. really to walk through that and see that yeah. in action. That's really amazing how, because it's, again, it's, you have to understand the structure and what you're asking and what you yeah, want to look exactly. for and know, but the fact that it can just get, yeah. it's almost like, it's just basically, it's gone out, it's taken everything off the internet basically and summarized it yeah. and distilled it into what you want to know right then and there. I think yeah. that's really cool. Um, and so this is this is why I said earlier, an amateur copywriter will ask, what tool do I use? But someone who knows, who has studied the craft even for a year or two or just understands, it's not about the tool. It is about how you use it and the questions you ask yourself. Because like, think of it this way, templates that we've used for, I don't even know, decades, templates are just an early form of artificial intelligence because just yeah. a model for organizing information and expressing information. That's all that we're doing now, just a lot faster and a lot sure. more expansive. But it's still more efficiently, yeah. More efficient. Yeah. But still, like if you so like pen and paper never put a copywriter out of work. And AI will not put a copywriter out of work who knows how to use it. Right. Right. Um, just a follow-up too. Um it sounds to me like some additional skills would be really useful for copywriters today yeah. that maybe we didn't need 10 or 15 years ago, you know, yeah. like the conversion rate optimization, Yes. Um, like maybe email list management, um, depending mm -hmm. on who they want to serve. Like, would you say those are areas that copywriters should look to understand better? And Absolutely. are there any others that they need to know? Ba baseline understanding of online analytics and data and tracking. You don't need to be certified. You need to become an expert on, let's say, Google Analytics, but you do need to have, and this is true in direct response for ages, algebra and math, like that's basically it, but it's still true now, and even more so now, is to have an understanding of data, understanding of metrics, understanding what kind of experiments are meaningful, because you can run a million experiments, but not all of them are going to be useful. Right. Or even, or even be, have a meaningful exactly. impact. Exactly. It's like the old days, like, well, a test is going to give us the biggest bang for the buck. You know, it's like, yeah. usually it was an offer test or a headline yeah. test, but you know. And, and so test, those like, like well, if we leave the periods off the end of the sentences, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But so this is what I mean. Like if you, if you are even half decent at the craft, but always improving, you'll be fine. You just learn how to use AI to fill in gaps and to do certain things that either would take you too long or you got easily stuck. Like if you have a hard time finding a big idea, if you have a hard time expressing a big idea in a headline deck, if you have a hard time understanding how do I actually close out this sales page or whatever the, the format is, AI can help you get better at it and do it better by simply being, by simply feeding you with variants and ideas endlessly. Yeah. And so you become, right. if you're good, if you're decent at the craft, you become the copy chief. You, yeah. you, of the hundred headlines it gives you, you go, yeah, but headline nine is like really shitty. I'm not going to use it. But headline number 22, that's something. I'm going to keep that and go through the list. So like you become more like. Yeah, you're like this conductor with this massive yeah. orchestra. This is what this is what Gene Schwartz said. He doesn't write copy. He assembles it. He assembles it. We're assembling it. We're assembling it. I love that. I it's love that. It's still true. Like <laughs> We are still assembling it after all these years. Yeah. We assemble copy. Oh. Yep. Well, I might want to share this with people. And you if should. I do. I would love for them to know how to find out more about you and get on your list. And you said you have this bionic writer. Am I getting yep. that correct? Uh, how do they get on that? Bionicwriter.com. Okay. I figured it was .com, but I didn't know if yep. it was. 
Dot and also or, yeah. uh, samueljwoods.com is just my website. I've written a ton. Uh, you can start there as well. So samueljwoods.com or bionicwriter.com. Uh, those are two places. Bionic Writer is an email list where I share what I'm doing and what I have done. And I'm sharing tutorials on how to do these things. I write about it. Now it's, it's broad in the sense that I think that AI is an excellent tool for human creativity. So I don't, I not only write just about Facebook ads, mm -hmm. for example, but I go a little bit broader too, because I think that properly used is an excellent tool for thinking better, for enhancing creativity and for augmenting what we do as humans. So it's, it's broad in the sense of like how AI can help us think better, write better and improve our creativity. Well, you've actually written books using AI. Is that correct? I have, and yeah. you have them published mm -hmm. on, selling, uh, it, Amazon on Amazon. Amazon, and... yeah. That's fantastic. I've had AI write a couple of um, uh, Pulp Fiction novels and they're selling on Amazon under a pen name because I'm doing an experiment. I'm seeing if I have AI write a book and I publish it on Amazon, do people buy it? And like, what happens? And so when the experiment is done, probably next year, I'll share yes. what those books were, but it's selling. People are buying it. So like, okay. That is so intriguing. <laughs> um, you know, I'm working on my first screenplay and yeah. it's been quite the learning experience for sure. Mm. Um, and I mean, I literally have spent probably 20 hours, like the last two and a half days, just mm. on a 21 page outline is probably the 15th version of it. So it takes a lot, you know, and I'd be curious, how could this save me some time? Although this is based on a historical event. It's not just yeah. making stuff up, but yeah, it's, um, I, you know, we will see what happens, but yeah, being the, the conductor of the orchestra is a much better place to be than, <laughs> you know, the violinist who no longer the has third violinist job, or something. You know? yeah. Um, yeah, you've been replaced <laughs> exactly. by a better, you know, computer generated violinist, you know, exactly. So, well, uh, for screenplays, it can if you have a, a thorny scene that you can't quite get right, if you mm -hmm. give it the right input, it can give you ideas for what to do with a scene. Right. And I'll be starting over Christmas. I have to yeah. write my first full act. I'm, I'm taking a um, very intensive screenwriting workshop with this nice. guy that, That's great. you know, it's it's funny because I'm like the mentee now and I have yeah. this guy that <laughs> tears my stuff apart and I'm so grateful. And that's awesome. You know, it's and he's brilliant. And uh, that's the best way to do it. Yeah. It is. And uh, but yeah, I'll be writing the, the first act. And, you know, I know that I probably am going to be really crappy with dialogue and I just got to, yeah. you know, maybe I need a little AI help who knows yeah um, yeah so yeah I, I, I'm so glad you know that we we talked and I hope if anybody's watching well. us, um they feel better about what's going on and you know kind of have a plan I mean you're definitely probably the smartest person I've heard from you know on this topic especially how it applies to copywriting and um I think people should be listening to what you say and following you well, thank you and, you know I really appreciate you taking the time but part of the reason I'm, I, I've been able to get as much out of AI so far is because I learned from people like you, like you've taught in the in your programs and the mentorship that I've done with you multiple times at this point. It's always the core fundamentals that are necessary for you to think different about copy and get the right understanding of it yeah. and then doing the exercises. So without it, like without, like I said, without the pursuit of a craft, you're not going to be able to use AI for much. Right. Like if I wasn't studying screenwriting, I wouldn't have any idea no. what prompt to put in or what exactly. to do with it. So exactly. you still have to, you have to understand yep. it. Well, I'm going to, um, I'll hit off. I'll, I'm going to end the conversation now, at least as far as recording. And um, this is cool. great. So valuable. Thank you so much. You got it.